Bridget. Our first ever interaction was when you retweeted a hate article about me from The Nationalist while I was a Sarasota County school student. You are a reminder that some people view politics as a service to others, while some view it as an opportunity for themselves. My question is why doesn't an elected official using our money to harm our students and our teachers for her gain seem to matter as much to us as her having a threesome does? Bridget Ziegler, you do not deserve to be on the Sarasota County School Board, but you do not deserve to be removed from it for having a threesome. Bridget, you deserve to be fired from your job because you are terrible at your job. Damn! Man, the kids are all right, aren't they? Ladies and gentlemen, arriving as a late contender for takedown of the year, allow me to draw your attention to this video of Xander Morich, a student that took to the podium during a hearing on Moms for Liberty founder Bridget Ziegler. The group Moms for Liberty has established itself as a conservative powerhouse in schools around the country. Its members push for book bans and advocate against any discussion of gender or sexuality as critical race theory in classrooms. Now, to bring you up to speed on the drama, Ziegler, founder of the hate group that travels around the country trying to encroach on what schools teach kids following the principles outlined in a newsletter of theirs that read, and I quote, he alone who owns the youth gains the future. Yes, they cited and printed Hitler on a newsletter of theirs. Yeah, that swell individual, well, she's in hot water after her personal sexual relations were made public. Now a co-founder of Moms for Liberty is caught up in a sex scandal involving sex with another woman. This woman, Bridget Ziegler. Know who their um, candidates are for school board, know where they stand and hold them accountable. She's a co-founder of the conservative group Moms for Liberty and on Tuesday was asked to voluntarily resign from the Sarasota County School Board. But as this student perfectly articulates in the context of the hatred that she stands for, that matters not. Bridget, our first ever interaction was when you retweeted a hate article about me from The Nationalist while I was a Sarasota County School student. You are a reminder that some people view politics as a service to others, while some view it as an opportunity for themselves. On this board, you have spent public funds that could have been used to increase teacher pay, to change our district lines for political gain, remove books from schools, target trans and queer children, erase black history, and elevate your political career, all while sending your children to private schools because you do not believe in the public school system that you've been leading. My question is why doesn't an elected official using our money to harm our students and our teachers for her gain seem to matter as much to us as her having a threesome does? Bridget Ziegler, you do not deserve to be on the Sarasota County School Board, but you do not deserve to be removed from it for having a threesome. That defeats the lesson we've been trying to teach you, which is that a politician's job is to serve their community, not to police personal lives. So, to be extra clear, Bridget, you deserve to be fired from your job because you are terrible at your job, <laughs> not because you had sex with a woman. I'd say there are a few elected officials who could put it better than he did. What she does in her personal life is not the story here. Sure, it's wildly hypocritical for someone who has no problem engaging in same-sex relationships in private to be vocally anti-LGBTQ and seek to demonize members of that community. Having sex with another woman in a threesome with her husband is not the issue. But when you claim the moral high ground and then you attack the moral integrity of others, the blatant hypocrisy of Mrs. Ziegler, and how it reflects on the credibility of this board is a significant concern. But it is about the hate that she spreads as a founder of a group that the SPLC put on its list of anti-government extremist entities. Drawing comparisons between them and parent groups that attempted to, wait for it, resegregate public schools during the civil rights movement. After a police investigation revealed the Moms for Liberty co-founder had consensual three-way sex with her husband and another woman just over a year ago, according to police records. That woman now accusing Ziegler's husband, GOP party chair Christian Ziegler, of rape. We have so many people that are just frustrated and want to reset and focus on education, and that's what we're going to get. Ziegler, who was first appointed to Sarasota School Board in 2014 by then-Governor Rick Scott, has been re-elected twice, campaigning on protecting parental rights and conservative values. A group that seeks to influence public schools while their founders send their own kids to private. This is what she should be disgraced for, not a threesome or whatever tickles her fancy in private. If you were in support of everyone having 
you know, these illicit type of relationships, then that wouldn't matter. Ziegler, a close ally of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, helped author Florida's parental rights and education law, dubbed by critics as the Don't Say Gay Bill. It removed discussion of sexual orientation and identity from public schools curriculum. DeSantis also appointed her to the board that manages Disney's special taxing district. It's not the first time that someone has took to a public hearing to call out Moms for Liberty members to their face. I covered a video recently where a father used his time to advocate for inclusion and reprimanded members of the hate group for their exclusionary bigoted views. Because no matter how hard you try to implement these discriminatory policies in the right way, you are never going to find a right way to do the wrong thing. And Governor Youngkin's policies are wrong. One of the ways you could tell is because you have speakers from groups like Moms for Liberty here to support them. And I'll be real simple in case you aren't paying attention. They're not the good guys. How can you tell? I can help. The good guys don't get declared extremist groups by human rights organizations. Never in history have the good guys been the ones trying to ban books. Never in history have the good guys been a segregationist group pushing to legislate identity. Never in history have the good guys been closely connected with and supported by hate groups like the Proud Boys. And the good guys don't put Hitler quotes for inspiration on the front of their newsletters. Newsflash, they're the bad guys. They're the bad guys here supporting bad policy. And if you support the same bad policy, guess what? You're one of the bad guys too. When you look around and see only the wrong people support what you're doing, you're doing the wrong thing. Now you've heard some speakers come up here and say how they love these kids but won't accept them. I'm here telling you that if your love makes somebody not want to be alive, it's not love. That's not love. Some speakers are going to get up here and talk about parental rights. The only right a parent has is the right to responsibility. And if you need somebody else to tell you who your kid is, you're probably not that good a parent. And some are going to get up here and tell you how it's the law. Well, I'd remind you that slavery and segregation also used to be the law here in Virginia and that there is no right way to do the wrong thing. So do the right thing. Reject these policies that harm and endanger our LGBTQ students. Be the good guys while you still can. Now what this video and countless others go to show is how far removed conservatives are from Gen Z. My name is Eric Willoughby. I'm a senior in high school and I come to you today from North Mecklenburg County, Huntersville to be specific. And I'm here today to convey a very, very simple message. I'm 17. I should be spending my Wednesday afternoons with friends or family, but instead I'm here with y'all. I'm here because every single day I have to worry about which liberties Republican legislators are going to choose to gut next. They started by refusing to take action against gun violence and destroyed your right to peace of mind about something as simple as sending your child to school. Then they came for your right to make the most basic reproductive health care decisions that were right for you and your family. This time, they're coming for every North Carolinian's right to fair representation. This legislature is made up of the same people who have drawn maps that intentionally disenfranchise and limit the power of historically marginalized and minority voters. These are the same people who have proven to us time and time again through their voting record that they don't care. If these people cannot be trusted to protect our most basic rights, how can we trust them to draw fair and impartial maps that will promote a healthy and vibrant democracy? They can't. We can't trust them. The Republicans in this committee and the others in the House and Senate don't care about democracy. They don't care about fair maps. All they care about are three simple things. Re-election, power, and dollar signs. This redistricting stunt is a clear power grab by Republicans in the General Assembly. So I urge you now, watch your step. Be very careful in what you choose to do because young people like me are watching and young people like me are fed uh, everything from overreach in schools to a lack of support for gun control and their medieval pro-life agenda, they're losing the youth that they seek to own. So good for this kid. We need far more like him. Thanks so much for watching. We're only a few subscribers short of 2 million subs. Please subscribe right now to the Midas Touch YouTube channel for free and help us grow this unapologetically pro-democracy network.